to Quantum Walk Wednesday, or QWW for short, where we interview graduate students and professionals in the research in quantum physics. Today, we're going to be interviewing Daniela Angulo Murcio, a PhD candidate at U of T working on the Steinberg Group in experimental quantum optics. In today's episode of Quantum Walk Wednesday, we're interviewing Daniela Angulo Murcio, uh, who I have right here. Hi. So, Daniela, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm a PhD student. I'm, right now, I'm writing my thesis. Uh, I've been here for a long time now, like I guess like seven years or so. And yeah, I enjoy cycling and play music. Nice. When did you first move here? In 2017 for my master's. Uh, yeah, I started my master's, did one year, and that's why I came. Yeah. How did your interest in like math, science, and physics first start? Well, I, it was from a very early stage in my life. Like, uh, since I was a kid, I was interested in math, and I think it sort of came natural to me a little bit, I, I could say that. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, like, growing up, my father had a grocery store, and then people would come there and sit and, like, drink something and, you know, eat or something, yeah. And then there was this uh, old, old guy, and he was a teacher yeah, of engineering. My father would let me sit with him and just have a conversation. He would teach me like tricks and give me some like little problems, math problems. That was cool. Yeah. Nice. And so then you decided to study um, engineering right first? Yes. And then yes. you switched to physics? Yes, yes. So at first it was a, probably an uninformed decision or like I was too rushed. I didn't know that I was more interested into the foundational aspect of things, but I also didn't know that there was this like, that the approaches were different. Like yeah. engineering was different from physics. Or I, I didn't know much about that. So yeah, I started doing engineering, and then I switched to physics. And uh, when did you like discover your passion for quantum physics specifically? Well, it started with optics. So I, I always say that my first passion was light and I think it still is yeah. so I, I I'm very obsessed with photons and what happens like to light and how it interacts with things and all these like funny effects and then from there I took this optics course and then I discovered quantum optics and how it was like this interplay uh, between the quantum part and the optics and also like a lot of linear algebra superposition so I like that and that's how I, I, I got into it what do you like most about it? So you do experimental quantum optics? Yes, yes. So what do you like most about it? I think what I like the most is that I'm working with light. So anything that has to do with light, that's what I do. So lasers and yeah, sources of light that, that I like. But it's also that it, it's, a, it's a small setup. Our lab is not this big thing like uh, accelerators or like colliders or these things. Uh, it's a small thing that allows you to be close to theory. Like you do your experiment, but you're still very close to your calculations and the understanding and yeah, you know the ideas. It's not just like data. So how many people do you have working in the lab? We have, well, the lab is divided into three parts. So there are like sub, sub fields. Like we have one part that's more atomic and we are like in the middle because we do light my interaction. And then there is the, the photon side. It's always like 10 to 11 people. Right. Actually, I read um, that you came to Canada to work with Steinberg, right? Yes. If you to work with Steinberg. So how is a day in the lab like with Steinberg? Well, Steinberg is uh, a little bit like hands-off. So you work independently. And I really enjoy that. I really appreciate that. Maybe at the beginning it's hard, but once you get used to it, it's like you, you really understand, you know, and, and then and then with Ephraim, like he's there for you. If you have any questions, so he's always available to chat and have these interesting questions. So a day in the lab when I was there, uh, I would get there maybe like at 10, 10 30, and then someone would have got there earlier to turn things on because all of this equipment uh, well it needs to warm up. Yeah. So there are drivers and function generators that need to warm up. Yeah, so then I would get there, we would do calibration. So a lot of what you do in the lab is just uh, teamwork. That's very important. And I think it's 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 
very valuable. I think like all my lab, my lab mates and their contribution are, are really important. Yeah, you do some calibrations and you see that everything is working and you like set the standard for the day. And then if you need to take data and you take data, like maybe after lunch, you start taking data. Calibrations take some time. But for the most part, what you're doing in the lab, you're not taking data for the most part because for the most part, what you're doing is solving problems because everything's broken. <laughs> so it, it's not that the equipment is faulty or anything. It's just that there is noise or something is working, stacking up. You don't know what it is and you need to figure out. Like, I have heard that quite a bit when I yeah. talk with experiment experimentalists. But it's like most of the time in the lab is spent just fixing things and reducing noise. Yeah, uh, that's true. But yeah, so I would just also like to ask you what your PhD thesis is about. That's a good question. I need to practice my elevator pitch. So it is about figuring out why light slows down in a medium, but also why it speeds up because it, it does, right? The group velocity under some conditions, like when your frequency is close to your uh, medium resonance, is going to go faster than light. Mm -hmm. It's a super luminal and uh, or negative even. So then the question is from the point of view of the photons, of considering light as photons, what is happening? How do photons spend its time when they are transmitted through a medium? Mm -hmm. The question is like, do these delays arise from the fact that the, the, the photons were exciting the atoms for some time and then they were, they were re-emitted and then you detected them? That's that's the question. So like, can you match this atomic excitation time times to the delays that the light gets? Even like, even if they are positive or negative, like what is the relationship between these, these two things? No, that, that sounds very cool. So tell us like, how, like, how did you develop this research thesis? Well, I, I'm not gonna take the credit for that question. It was originally, this, this idea was, uh, developed by my predecessor, Josiah Sinclair. And he asked this question and he tried to measure uh, without much luck. And because there were a lot of noises and they were only able, we were only able to take one data point. And at the time we wouldn't frame the question like the way I, I, mm -hmm. I spoke to you about it. Like it, it was different, it was a different thing, but it was in essence was the same, but the way we would tell the story was different. It was his idea when he was trying to figure out something related to uh, a cross phase shift and who was responsible for that cross phase shift. That was mm -hmm. sort of the, the question at the time. Yeah, like that experiment happened and then uh, it didn't work that well. And we were, yeah, I said, well, we should try. And I had to work a lot to get rid of the noises. And yeah, that's, that's how I came to it. Right. I don't know, that is very cool, that's very interesting what you do. I, I also take quite a bit of liking to light. That's yeah. also how I first got like introduced to like quantum mechanics. So yeah, no, that's very cool. And so I, when are you expecting to defend your thesis? Like in three weeks maybe? The, uh, we have two defenses, so uh, my first defense, yeah, in three weeks. Okay, good luck with yeah. the defense. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And uh, yeah, I was also wondering like how you hope that your research will impact the field. So for sure, not from an application perspective, but I think from from the foundational aspect, for sure, because this is a question that seems to be very easy, like like something very simple that everyone should know how to answer. And people do know how to answer this question, but like from a perspective of light being a wave, mm -hmm. so not like light being a stream of photons. So, uh, and that's that's my that's my answer and also it contributes uh it, it has a lot to do with weak measurements mm -hmm. so i think from that uh it's also like a nice a nice contribution to the field great so anyway, the last question i had for you was um how what, what kind of advice would you give to anyone planning on pursuing a phd in quantum optics well if it's an experiment an experimental quantum optics, yeah, yeah an experimental quantum optics is like you're gonna spend a lot of time uh, learning how to operate your apparatus. So you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And also you have to spend a lot of time hunting for noises mm -hmm. and like trying to chase them down. So that's also, that also requires patience. And I think it's a lot of hard work and like being very 
detail oriented mm -hmm. so yeah if you enjoy that then for sure and yeah so it's stressful and they re but they're rewarding at the same time it's like yeah it's, it's, it's a lot oh and what are your career prospects too what like what are you aiming to do later on with your PhD? well i, I don't want to work in industry that's a fact but i, I i'm looking to maybe I maybe mean, for now I'm gonna spend some months uh, working for 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 Ephraim uh, as a postdoc mm -hmm. in the photons side but then what I would like to do is trying to switch fields into something that's more like social uh, oriented like maybe okay let me give you an example there is a there is a group here in the engineering department in the civil engineering department that that, that works with analyzing traffic patterns for bikes so that like trying to see how to improve bike lanes from the inside they get from analyzing data. I think that's something I'm very interested. In. So something like that, right? More more like related to society problems and like day to day problems. Why not industry? I don't like it. Also like it's not it's not our thing. I, I feel like in our group uh, a lot of what we do is very foundational. And I don't think that's like something that my heart is not in it yeah. like my heart is in the foundational things and that's why i work with him yeah. and i appreciate working uh, with him for that reason so yeah going to industry nah, i don't see it yeah no that's very fair would you see yourself going into academia maybe teaching <laughs> i like teaching but not as like uh, like i wouldn't want to become a professor I, I don't think that's my that's my career goal i think yeah yeah i have to work a lot <laughs> you sacrifice yeah. a lot yeah. for that and i'm like i like I have a lot of interests that I'm not willing to yeah. sacrifice for that. Yeah, yeah, like biking and exactly. Also, yeah. I also read that you really like uh, you really enjoyed the PS. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I read novels. I, I like all of these things. I like life like in so many ways. So yeah, I think that might be it for today. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It was really nice talking. To you. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Bye bye. <laughs> If you like this video, make sure to follow our account so that you never miss an episode. And if you want to know who our next special guest is, make sure to follow qside.toronto on Instagram. See you next week.